Ireland get abortion. <laughs> Support Network have to exist. <laughs> Making abortion illegal does not stop abortion. Making abortion illegal makes it so that women and families with money have options, and women and families without money have babies. <laughs> In October of 2009, and in the last three years, we have heard from 609 women living in Ireland and Northern Ireland. Women and families and couples who, in addition to facing an unplanned, unwanted pregnancy, had the additional burden of having to call a total stranger in a foreign country and beg for money. These are women who do not have credit cards. These are women who do not have overdrafts. These are women to whom we say, have you checked under your sofa cushions for change? Do you have a bill you can't pay this month? These are women who have sold their cars. These are women who've cut off their phones. These are couples who are out of work, who are looking for work, who are making the responsible decision as to whether or not they can parent a child, or in most cases, another child. These are victims of rape. These are women and couples whose wanted pregnancies are facing catastrophic fetal anomalies. These are girls as young as 14 and women as old as 47. These are me, they're you, they're your mothers, they're your sisters, they're your daughters, they're your girlfriends, they're your wives, they're your partners. They are the one in three women in the United Kingdom who will have an abortion in her lifetime and it is a shame that they need to get on a plane and travel to another country. very pleased and proud to be able to help the number of women who call us. We are ashamed and saddened when women call us who we cannot help. Women who we can't help because we don't have money in the bank because it's the end of the month and the next lot of standing orders haven't come in. Women we can't help because they need visas to travel and they can't get them. Women whose abusive partners won't let them out of their sights. Women who took so long to get the money together that by the time they heard of us and came over, they were over the legal limit for a termination. It sickens us. It makes us so angry. And it makes us so happy that all of you here are going to start talking about abortion. You're not just going to talk about it to each other. You're going to talk about it to your mothers and your sisters and your brothers and your fathers and your teachers and your colleagues and your fellow students and your workmates, and you're gonna say, 12 women a day have to travel, and those are the women who can get the money together, and that's not fair. <laughs> and I wanna say thank you, thank all of you for coming out today. What I really wish is that you all put us out of business. Yes. And then we'll say, hello, Poland. <laughs> Thank you. So, Chai Nighy is going to talk to us next. But before then, I'm just going to run through a few things. After she finishes, we're all going to go over to Toners on Bible Street. Relax, it's nearly there. So this, is this has been the first annual March for Choice. We'll see you back here next year. March for Choice in Belfast is on the 6th of October. Hopefully see a lot of you there. If you 
looking for more ways to reach out and get involved. Choice Ireland are on Facebook. The Irish Choice Network are on Facebook. The Abortion Support Network is also on Facebook, as are many more organizations. You'll find us there. Stay involved. Stay active. Stay pro-choice and proud. Speak up. Speak out. Tell your TDs. Tell your local representatives. Tell your families. Tell your friends. Normalize what is normal being pro-choice. Thank you all. See you in